wish we could shoot the first part of this like a silent movie. In, I mean, in black and white, and just put up a title card that says, Curse you, Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh man. It is the Buffalo No Huddle, brought to you by the Batavia Daily News and Livingston County News, sponsored by Ficarella's and by Genesee Community College. I'm Jimmy Jam. I host the morning show from 6 to 10 on CJ Country. And along with me, Mark Tillery, executive producer of this show. And uh, coming off a 33-27 Bills loss in overtime to Tampa Bay. A tale of uh, two ball games, but uh, there's, a, there's a, lot to a lot to unpack here. But, but I feel good. I feel good after the way things transpired in the game, even though they didn't win it. But you tell me your thoughts. Look, coming back from a 24-3 halftime de deficit to force overtime, it's a typical heartbreaking game that we've come to expect from Buffalo. But you know what? You saw the team grow. You definitely saw special teams come come back into the into the fold a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. they especially after you know those two guys sitting and uh, losing QB one possibly is the scariest part of it all. But hopefully it's it's nothing big on Josh. Hopefully it's just maybe week to day, day to day, week to week. We we don't know yet. But uh, you know, getting into this weekend, we won't talk about the Carolina game yet. But I would rather see Allen sitting at this point, just let him rest up a little bit. I'd love to see his starting streak continue, but it is what it is at this point. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's salt in the wound with Josh going down. I mean, I made a joke asking if Brady was a relative of the Pagoulas because he seems to own the Bills every time he, he plays them, no matter what team he plays for. So, yeah. uh, it's just, it was tough. It was tough to take in. Uh, I did, the first half was, was rough. I mean, what was, what was your take on it? Obviously, I shut the TV well, off at halftime, and I went back. The so. first, half, <laughs> first half was what it was, and I thought we were going to see a repeat of what happened in the Colts game where the wheels just sort of fell off. But this second half, was the closest I've seen the Bills look to their 2020 selves, where their offense it felt like it was you know it was inevitable when they would get the ball that they right. were going to score. They put they turned it on a big way in the second half, and while it didn't turn out the way you know the way they wanted with a win, it was uh, it was great to see them come back the way they did and fight the way they did because if that's that team we've got going forward. I feel good about our chances in the final four games. Um, do you remember there was a comeback game? with uh, Peyton Manning coming back to beat Tampa Bay on Monday Night Football. Yes. This game was almost identical to that. It was, it was. It was almost identical. They just didn't get the dub, but it, it had that same vibe, and it happened almost the same way. So it was, it was kind of amazing to, just to watch this happen. But um, as far as Allen goes, um, I got a feeling he's going to play, and I mean, that's just not whistling in the graveyard either. I mean, he, he was seen, and this is the part that cracks me up, and I've actually talked about this on the morning <laughs> show, how uh, people are just so in – players' business, what they do nowadays with social media. Oh, of course. Why not? Alan was out eating the other day, didn't have the boot on, so someone had to mention <laughs> that. And and then on top of that, he went to Hamilton the other night at Shea's Buffalo, yeah. didn't have the boot on. So I, to me, that's a good sign. He's that's not a very good with, sign. He's not walking around with it everywhere. And the way McDermott phrased it in the press conference on on uh, on Wednesday, he it, it sounds like if Josh has it all in him to, to go, he's going to play just because who he is and stuff like that. I, I feel he's sort of on the borderline, but they want to add an air of caution. And why give uh, Carolina any way to game plan? Let him game plan for him and Mitch right. Trubisky. So, you know, I, I think he's going to play. So I mean, looking back on it, uh, I, I don't like to call Josh Allen a young QB, but he is a young QB. So, Still, when you, yeah. the first half of that game, I, he just, it's like he was a deer in headlights. And, and obviously, no one helped him out. I mean, it, he it got was sacked really, three times. Yeah. He, didn't have any, he had no help offensively. And, that, and here's the thing we've talked about this during the season. What is their identity and why aren't they doing the things they need to be doing? And they insisted on running in that Monday night game when obviously Josh could make some throws in that game and they finally went to him. Did you notice in the second half they finally let Josh be Josh and they rode with him? And it's amazing how, you know, this team can't run the football. All yep. of a sudden, Josh is doing what he's doing. Oh, all of a sudden, they can break off a few long runs. Isn't that crazy how that kind of all works? It is crazy. Works. You put Allen in the, you put that Allen into play with the running game, and then all of a sudden, your running game comes alive. Yeah. It's just the, the first half, I mean, the Bills were about as believable as Jesse Smollett as a team. But when it comes down to it, they came back in the second half. Josh Allen proved... He has the heart of a lion, the the will of a warrior. The guy is the kid is no joke, man. I just wish he had the, the full team working at once on all cylinders I, you with know him. You well, know? you know what? There, there's some things they're gonna have to fix in the offseason, but uh, you know, Gabe Davis with 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 Emmanuel Sanders going down, Gabe Davis, you saw him emerge a little bit more, and he's gonna be the guy next year going forward that's gonna be a big part of being a starter on that offense. Um I do love the future. But statistically you know, Josh has had bigger games where he's thrown for four touchdowns right. and all that stuff. But you know what? As far as a complete game, 109 yards rushing and a running touchdown. He threw two touchdowns, threw for over 300. It's, to me, this was his best game as a pro because it showed 
He could jump. He could jump and take control of this team and take it somewhere. It just didn't work out in the end yeah. because Brady is Brady, and it was overtime, and it's that type of situation. You know, I, 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 it, it seems a little curious to run that fade route that they did. You know, that one that that, that um, Diggs didn't catch. Yeah. When. The middle of the field was working, and you got all the time in the world in overtime. It's just like you know, right. get that completion. You know, if they'd kept the ball, if they'd made that 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 conversion, I feel like they go from there and they go right down the field and score. So. I agree. And you said that uh, Allen threw for around three three hundred oh, yards, three hundred yards, hundred yeah, on the ground. He ran for one hundred nine on the ground. Yeah. Um, it, it's pretty cool that he joins the company of Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, and Lamar Jackson for the only players to do that, and only quarterbacks to do that in NFL history. But you know what? There's not another quarterback like him in the league. You know what I mean? Like Lamar, Allen is the man. No, Lamar. Allen's... Lamar is. It's apples to oranges. I'm not saying anything against Lamar it's or great Russell. Company to be in. I'm just saying Josh is such a unique, just he's a rare bird. He just really is, and it was great to see see him. You know, they always talk that expression. You know, you know, let let Josh cook or let Russell right. cook. You know, Josh got to cook, and it, I liked it. it I just good. I don't want to be that 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 analyst or that that fan in the room on this, but he's getting beat up out there too. He, uh, he, the run, I love the, the runs well, he, that are designed for him, but I don't want to see his career cut short by pulling that RG3 stuff. Well, he's never gonna, he's like not going to be able man. to do that forever. And, and, to, and to be honest with you, on Sunday, we might get a taste of what he looks like four or five years from now because he may not be able to run on Sunday. Now, adrenaline, something to be said for that. Right. And recovery time, something to be said for that. And we don't know how severe this foot sprain was. In reality, because he said after the game, because I finished the game, so it can't be that bad. To, right. But you know, he's a, he's a, he's got a, he's a competitor. But, uh, but a baller, you, you man. might you might you know you might see him having more of a pocket presence on on Sunday if he was to play. But I'll tell you what, if that offense does what they do and this defense feasts on Carolina the way they do, because Carolina don't even know who their quarterback's going to be right now. <laughs> uh, Cam to, to me, I mean, I, I'm even okay with Mitch Trubisky playing, but I think it's going to be Josh. And look, we got four games left. You got New England, and then you got three potentially winnable games coming up with the Panthers, Falcons, and the Jets, and those three games are at home. Yeah. We win three out of four. We're in a really good place to um, to to get to the playoffs with ten, 10 and seven. But you know what? If they play like they did in the second half, they can beat New England next time. They can beat New England uh, next time because that New England game was an aberration. Weather-wise, yeah. and a lot of things about it were an aberration. I could, I, that's the team that can beat New England. Buffalo can beat any team on any given day. Any team has that, has that day. But Buffalo has the squad to do it. I, I can't wait to that's, face New England again. To be honest, I'm not looking past Carolina because right. it's a game that if you lose it, that's They absolutely that's have curtains, to win but, but But here's the, here's the thing. they got to win three out of four. I'll take again. that three out of four however you want. And look, this AFC, look, if you're looking to see last year's Bills, you're not. But throw that graphic up that shows the, that shows the, the AFC race or the AFC playoff race. Put that up there. Look how close the top seed is to the guys on the inside. We're talking a spread of about three games here. Right. So everybody has had their adversity this season. Chiefs stumbled. The Titans are all banged up. The Bengals went backwards a few steps. It's and Baltimore now with Lamar Jackson. You know right. what I mean? It's like it's it's wide open. It's anybody's to take it. And right now, if this is the catalyst, this heck second half is the catalyst that gets the Bills going in the right direction in these final four games. They right. might be peaking at the right time. We don't know. And that's why we got to let these games sort of play out and stuff like that. But the AFC is just a mess. The NFL is drunk this season. Okay? The NFL is drunk this season. And uh, who knows how things are going to shake out. You know what I mean? There's a lot of surprises out there all over the place in both right. conferences. But the AFC is tight right now. They're very tight. I think uh, I think we did see a potential Super Bowl match uh, this past weekend, and I'm not blowing smoke. I mean, if the if the healthy Bills were were playing, I mean, like you said, every team. So you believe it, that's still a thing, although it seems like the league shirt sure makes it not want to be. And we can get into, we can get into more of that. In we'll definitely awards. get into it. No, we definitely will because I'm sure we're on the same page here. And right. I, I know you sent me. We talk about the awards and whatnot, but I I, I just I, I wait till we uh, everything changes throughout the course of, of even this show. But uh, <laughs> no, looking at it, looking at it, it's. Uh, I just, I, I feel that a healthy Bills team could beat that Buccaneers team. It's just a Super Bowl is terrifying against someone like Tom Brady. They'd have to but not play scared, though, Mark. That's the thing. I think, I, the think, torch. I think the Bills have have wanted to be that team and thought they were going to be that team that would come screaming out the gate like they did last year and do it again. And when it didn't happen as easy, then they start playing tentative and start playing scared. That second half, they played fearless and they balled they out did. and they looked like the 2020 Bills. They really did on both sides of the ball. The defense, you know, put put a you know was relentless in the second half. Yeah. And, and Josh got sacked zero times second half because he was getting away, making plays, and they were doing what they wanted to do. So the, the first half is just one of those things where you know you're going out there against the world champions. I don't want to say they're star starstruck at this point. I don't, I don't want to say that they're intimidated at this point. But there's a level of intimidation when you're playing Tom Brady and you're playing the Super Bowl champions. I love that Buffalo got it together in the second half. With 
without I wish Tredavious they, White, too. Can I say yeah, that, too? Without they, they TD, shut down that without passing TD. offense and everything, and Tampa Bay's got talent all over the place. And I think they did a decent job other than a couple catches of, of shutting down Gronk. I thought they did they did great. Why don't we why don't we jump to the awards? And uh, let's talk about our MVP for uh for for Sunday, I mean, to me, it's Josh Allen. Like I said, this was his best game as a pro. That first half interception, well, yeah, you can't be doing that. You gotta just, you know, I know, like you're trying to make something happen, but you can't do the hero ball and, and throw it away in a weak interception like that. But second half, amazing. That's the Josh we know and love. Uh, nothing else bad to say about that performance. I just love everything about it. Josh Allen has a tendency to shift gears from a, a deer in headlights to a lion, straight up. Like I was talking earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, my player of the game could have. Could have been Stefan Diggs. Stay tuned for that one. But we're looking at Josh Allen. Carry the team on his back after that dismal first half and just have one heck of a second second half. We don't need to say anything else. Jimmy said it all. We said it all at the beginning of the show. Josh Allen definitely earned that, and hopefully we'll see him back this weekend wearing our laundry. Uh, better luck next time. Um, and and I don't even know that I could put the full blame on them because Tom Brady's got one of the fastest releases at getting the ball out than anybody. But the pass defense that we've talked about time after time, we got to get more sacks. And in the second half, finally, finally when they needed it though, they got you know Milano gets that sack in the second half. You know, but I mean it was once again I would love to see and and, they, and they've got so many young pass rushers. I get it, but I just they, I just feel like if there's some way to get us via trade, free agency, or draft a superstar pass rusher, they got to do it. I think their next big priority though is going to be a receiver come come draft time. I mean, they, they have be. talent, but there's a couple guys going away that we've talked about in the past. You know, they're, they're definitely there. building up on that. Yeah. I mean, I would have to say my better luck next time. <laughs> You're going to laugh at me for this one. But Stephon Diggs, man. The poor guy got held. He he could have had one of the games of his life. And all these things happen to him when my better luck next time is definitely not an insult so you, to him. So your better luck next time is actually in the spirit of in yeah, the spirit better of, luck next time, bro. Yeah, he, <laughs> no, he definitely, no, he definitely, uh, he could have had a better game. It was just the, the BS on the ref side of things and the BS and the holding calls. When are they going to, and I don't want to even talk about the mafia and the glasses here's thing and everything the, else. When are they going to call this stuff? Here's the, here's the and thing. And it's Brady, so they're not going to call it. Here's the and thing. I said it right there on camera. There are bad calls in every NFL game. There always will be. And I've always been from the school of thoughts score more points and then you don't have to worry about that stuff but in in so many ways the holds on Stefan Diggs in this felt like the most egregious that I've ever seen in yeah. my 45 years of watching football it was just it was just I I it some was of them intense. Just, they're just they're just I was, the best thing I saw on Twitter was the guy who said Stefan Diggs has been fined ten thousand dollars <laughs> for having his shirt out in the game somebody faked the NFL Tag him, we're putting it behind and they're showing the picture of him getting pulled by his shirt is it yeah uh, yeah, yeah. So you literally, all right. In the spirit of the word, better luck in next the spirit. time. Because 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 Diggs is Diggs. We love Diggs. So we go. love him. It just wasn't fair, man. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying that it, you said it all. It's just that there yeah. was legitimate holding going on there, and no one called it. And just only Tom Brady. Bro, seriously. Here's my bro. Seriously, I've got it's gonna. It's a three way tie right now. Sean McDermott was uh, not strong from a coaching standpoint on Sunday. His his un. His, his inability to um, handle certain fourth down situations. Why do you take the ball out of Josh's hands to run a fake with Matt Breida on a punt? Wait, why punt it away when the team's got some momentum offensively going? I felt like there were opportunities to win within the game before overtime, and I just feel like it was a bad game. And look, everybody, look, players are allowed to have bad games, but not coaches. I get right. it. So you know what? I'm going to give McDermott a pass on that, but. He, uh, he needed to do a better job there. Um, also, the referees, we've talked about, the referees were just awful. So they're part of my uh, bro seriously award, too, because enough is enough. Um, I'm not one of those conspiracy theory theorists <laughs> that think the NFL is rigged because how are you going to get 53 guys on each squad and, and all these other pieces in place when you can't keep a secret between three friends at, at a bar? You know what I mean? So I don't believe <laughs> that stuff. But the point being is that, is that this is, you know, your scripted reality show stinks, NFL. Not for nothing. Lastly... Fairweather fans, okay, and I, and I and I can only speak for myself for doing the morning show that I do. You know, I'm a everybody who listens to my morning show knows that I'm a huge Bills fan. So when things start going bad, here are people that never text me when we're up by 30 points, winning. They feel comfortable texting yeah. when we're losing, and they, and they want to twist it in. I take it, and finally, I told a friend of mine who lives in Buffalo, who I've known a long time, Richie Kozak. Richie, if you check this out, this is for <laughs> you, buddy. I said, dude, you love the sword of Damocles hanging over your head. You got to stop with this. You know what I mean? It's like I can feel bad enough without people helping. Right. And, and you know what? And you got to let games play out because you never know. It's like these, all these people that were you know running for the hills. I don't say anything during the game. You see me usually complaining during the game. You never I'll complain. Text with you. I don't. I don't sit there and I'll point out certain things. 
But I'm not predicting doom and gloom. Second half was awesome to watch and stuff like that. It's like everybody shut up all of a sudden. Yes. I had to message a few people back going, what? okay, where are you now? Can't hear you. It's like, why don't you text me when things are good? Text me when things are good. Fairweather fans stink. So. I'll make a joke because this all is right. what we do. This is, we we spent, you and I are from back in the day. By the way, I'm, I'm sending back to Amazon that tinfoil hat I got you for Christmas, man. I guess. Thank you. I, I, I guess, I guess it you It doesn't fit it. like most of my clothing. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, we've all gone through the, the four Super Bowl losses, and God bless my father for, for saying this, but I, I still think it's, it's something that's it was ridiculous when he, did, when he said it, and it's ridiculous now. Um, he said, I will trade those four Super Bowl, or no, he goes, I wouldn't trade those four Super Bowl losses for one Super Bowl win. I go, I would. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure half, half a Buffalo would. It would have changed, it changed everything around here, but bottom line. They're going to get it with Allen. This just may not be the squad. This ain't the roster maybe that gets it done, but I, I, I honestly believe Allen's got the heart of a lion, and I think he's the catalyst for winning one going forward at some point. So I, I, I joked around and, and said I'm shutting the TV off at, uh, at halftime just because you do that. You get angry. We, we, I've been through the four losses. You've been through the four losses. You've been through the, 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 the bad I eras. messaged him. Like, how, how, what, what, I guess I'm hosting the show by myself. What, what's that I know. About? I figured it. You got it. You, it just, it's basically kayfabe putting it out there. But, uh, oh you know, getting to my, my Bro Seriously Award, I, look, this is my honorable mention for it. Okay. Defensive end, F.A. Odaba. Obata. Obata, Obata, excuse him too, me. Him too. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you have you have the goat right right in front of you, first half. And he breaks your ankles at 44 years old. Tom Brady broke your ankles. It's the strawberries, man. He doesn't eat the strawberries. <laughs> I keep telling you that. He's the strawberries. But I have to say, I'm not. Spencer a... Brown was another guy, too, that could have had a better game. He did not play good. And Agreed. that's the, to be fair, though, it's the only time the rookies really whiffed this season on the offensive line. So. Right. But just seeing Tom Brady at 44 years old breaking a young defensive end's ankles just hurt. <laughs> but, you know, I have to say, I'm not a fan of doing this, but. I didn't want to go there, but the fix is in. And I'm not talking about the, the fix that I ordered on Sunday or tonight. I'm talking about I did not like the way the Bucks were catered to in that game. I'm not, I'm not wearing a Tim Paul oh, hat. Oh, I don't. Uh, I, I just don't. don't like the holding, man. And I don't like how all of a sudden Brady just comes out of nowhere and wins it. And it's just, come yeah. on, man. I, I don't and I don't know if he knows what's going on. or, or and I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, like I said, but I just it's unbelievable. I, I'm not saying it's a scripted play, but it's definitely curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> the show is the show right now. We'll but play the uh, baseline like Seinfeld. The right bills, will have to, bills will have to overcome it going forward. So uh, my question for uh, Alex Braski for the Tavy Daily News, um, you see where the liabilities are for the team right now in the, a lot of places. We've talked about the, the foibles of the line on defense and offense and stuff like that. But what's the one position you're drafting for in April, Alex? There's one of two positions that the Bills need to address in the upcoming draft, and they both lie on the line of scrimmage. That's offensive and defensive line. One thing is for sure this season, the Bills have not been physical enough along the line of scrimmage. It's led to a lack of pass rush and a lack of running game on the offensive side of the ball. So if it were me, two sides of the ball one line of scrimmage, that's where the Bills need to address in the upcoming draft. All right, we're going to come back to Alex Brasky in, in a little while here and talk about predictions and uh, everything for uh, Sunday. But right now, why don't we uh, thank one of our sponsors for being part of Buffalo No Huddle, GCC. Choose a school where the arts come alive, where science and technology thrive, to create something extraordinary. No matter which path you choose, GCC gives you the tools to start your next journey. Because when you choose GCC, your time is now. So let's talk about Sunday. Let's talk about the Bills taking on the Carolina Panthers. And we're actually not going to have, like, wet weather. It might be, I don't even know if we'll have snow, actually. It's just going to be cold on Sunday. What a concept. Right. I'm not going to be soaked through at the end of the ballgame, but... Uh, yeah, the Carolina Panthers start off the season 3-0. and Sam Darnold was looking at he had been reborn. I agree. And the wheels have just sort of fallen off for them. And, you know, they've brought Cam Newton back into the fold, but even Cam Newton hasn't looked like Cam Newton anymore. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, well, you know, if he even starts on Sunday. Who, I mean, it just is. I like Cam Newton, though. I I, I do. I like him as a, as a player. I like him off the field. He's I like him guy, to. I like just... him to a point. I'm sorry, you got to jump on fumbles in the Super Bowl. That's I'll agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's kind of you know no, kind of punk there. whatever. Ooh, I went I, there. Yeah, absolutely, I went there. But you're, it's another you're, Patriots loss we could have seen. But um, yeah. So Carolina's lost eight out of ten after that three and zero start. So it's been tough sailing for them. Um, from a defensive standpoint, I mean, they you know they've got a, they've got a few guys that uh, you know. Are, are you know that can make plays? Yeah, Shaq Thompson, you know, gets a p bunch of tackles. Uh, quarterback uh, Stefan Gilmore is, is there now too. So oh. we got him. 
uh, shred you know, him. But for the most part, it, this season has not gone Carolina's way on either side of the ball. Um, I don't see a lot now. And granted, granted, you know, I guess everything's off the table when you lose to Jacksonville once during the season. But I will say, I just feel like the way where the Bills are now, they're not gonna, they're not going to stumble again. And I don't feel like this is going to be a a um, a tough game for them. And uh, and you got and you got to love us at home and stuff. You know, we've been three of and course. three at home. It's been of tough, course. but I think this is going to be a game where Do for they one. get right. They, I, I feel like such a rebound from. A, I've never seen a team rebound from a or rebound from a loss like they could potentially could do on Sunday. Right. I just feel like. They maybe haven't figured out that second half was it was like it was like an epiphany for me against Tampa Bay. You know what? I, and I'm hoping and I'm hoping moving forward that uh, you know the, the things fall as they may. But I'm hoping a wild a wild card is going to be a resurgence of this team like like no other. You know, they like you said they played amazingly on Sunday. They played. It, it's questionable against New England, but again, that's the elements. I cannot wait to face New England They're again. Not. Like I said, I'm not going against uh, going after past Carolina here. But hey, I'm not even going. It's past a strong the, team. I'm not even strong saying team. divisions out of out of the realm of possibility because they got the Patriots got to play the Colts again. They got to play got to play the Bills again. Right. And I'm telling you, that second half Buffalo team would whip New England. Would whip New England. You can't look at that. You can't look at that game on Monday night and, and, and draw parallels there just because it was a weird night. It was an aberration of a kind of night. You think? Well, you think Mac Jones ain't gonna pass the next time they play? It was some hounds of the Baskerville weather at that point. You can't even see in front of you, and, and that's there's, it was there's no blame that night. I'm, I'm, you know, it's a mulligan. Now, <laughs> it's I mean, a, I look it's a like, loss, but it's a mulligan at this point. I, I can't say that I've done hardcore studies on. I mean, because I'm, I'm like the average Joe, like you are. Uh, look at a Carolina's roster. I mean, you know, Cam is, uh, you know. You know he's been inconsistent since he's come back and stuff. I mean, uh, they they got Chubba Hubbard, who's a great rookie at running back. Right. So they got him on offense, but you know they should be looking at who's going to be the you know the guy who's going to be the, in the backfield with them come the future because they ain't going right. to be Cam. I mean, I, I tip. I mean, I, it was they, cool they, to have, for Cam to get the homecoming, but he's he's no franchise quarterback anymore. If you can't win under Bill Belichick, then you're obviously uh, you're just not long for the league. I mean, but, he went yeah. back to Carolina for a homecoming. That was it. it was I, so, put butts in the seats. Yeah, I feel bad because it, because it's you know it's been it's been a weird week and the holidays. I, like I've, I've been running around like a nuts. I really have a chance to delve over Carolina like I want to, but I do have a score in mind. But why don't we get to predictions? Let's start off with Alex Brasky for the Batavia Daily News. Alex, prediction, final score. What do you got? Give me the Bills to win this game. The Bills have struggled this season. They've been inconsistent. There's no question about it. But this have, has the makings of a get-right game. The Panthers have not been good in recent weeks. In fact, they're 2-8 and eight over their last 10 games. They've lost three consecutive games. So this is a get-right game for the Bills. Give me them to win 28-14 to 14 over the Carolina Panthers this weekend. Josh Allen was fantastic last week against the Buccaneers. Got a little banged up. But expect him to play, expect him to flourish against the Panthers' inconsistent secondary and expect the Bills' defensive line maybe to ramp things up and, and get a couple of sacks finally against what's a porous offensive line on part of the Panthers. So give me the Bills to win this game, 28-14. to 14, Buffalo back in the win column. All right, Alex, and when we come back, we will give you our picks. Uh, we got to get our game time fixed, though. Nick Ficarella, the Pizza Making Universe. See, now I want pizza. Every time we every time we come back for one of those, now I want pizza. It's always good. Boy, oh boy. And that, get, and, and that guy is